Thanks for joining us for this podcast from Atlee Church. Atlee is a safe place for those who've given up on church or never went. Our mission is to reach seekers and equip believers to love God, love themselves, love others, and serve the world. We'd love to have you connect with us at one of our physical campuses or online for a weekend service. You can find out more about our locations and service times on our website. We hope that you will be encouraged and challenged to take the next step in your personal faith journey through the message you're about to hear. Everybody doing all right this weekend? Yeah? Well, I want to say hello to everybody. What's up, Northside? Glad that you're with us today. Scottsville Campus, glad you're with us too. And those watching online and then those here in Mechanicsville, glad that you're here with us today. As uh, we continue a series we've been in the last few weeks called Unfinished. Uh, For those of you who don't know me, my name is Trey Kreitzer. I am one of the campus pastors and one of the teaching pastors here on staff at Atlee. And it's always an honor and privilege to be with you guys every time I get to share in conversation with you. And today we're going to continue this series that we started and kind of look at another word together. But before we kind of jump into everything, um, I want to look at kind of what we've been talking about over the last few weeks. We've been talking about how God is continuing to work in our lives all of the time. From when we were born to where we are now, God has always been at work. And if you've been here for this series, hopefully you've gotten a lot out of it. I know I have personally, but if you've missed any weeks, go back on our podcast, catch up on any of those weeks that you missed. But if I were to choose one phrase that basically shares everything about this series that I've kind of learned, I would sum it up in one statement. And what I want us to do at all of our campuses, I want us to read this statement out loud together as loud as we can. And on the count of three, when it shows up on the screens, we're going to read it together. Ready? One, two, three. God is not done with me. Ah, that was a little weak. Let's try that again. All of our campuses. Ready? Let's read this. One, two, three. God is not done with me. Good. Yeah, that was really good. Give yourselves a hand. Yes. Make sure you're alive and well. But that's been the phrase for this series, that God is not done with me and he's not done with you. That there are things that he continues to want to work on in our lives to make us into the people that he created us to be. And we're an ongoing project that God is continuing to work on. So no matter if this is your first time at church today or this is your thousandth time coming to church today, God is at work. He's at work in your life personally. He's at work in your family. He's at work in all the different areas in which our lives are around. And so today, as we continue in this series, I I want you to keep that in mind, that God is at work in your life, and he wants to do great things through your life today as we unpack our next word together. Now, as we jump in, I I want us to think about a question that I've been thinking about a little bit this week, because it's kind of been fresh on my mind. And the question is this. We throw it on the screen for me. Oh, that was weird. Here it is. Have you ever felt unqualified? Have you ever felt unqualified? Think about your life. Maybe something somebody's asked you to do. Maybe it's a task at hand. Maybe it's an opportunity. Maybe it's something going on at work or in your family. How many of you would say, there have been a time in my life where I have felt unqualified? Anybody ever have a moment like that? Cool, most of us have had that kind of feeling or sense come over us where something just felt like it was impossible for us to accomplish. Well, I know for me in my life, um, a few uh, weeks ago, we celebrated my son's second birthday. And what we decided to do for his birthday was get get him something outdoorsy because he loves being outside. So we decided with all the grandparents to all chip in together and get him an outdoor play set. So we started looking at a bunch of different ones and some were really expensive and they would show up at your house and put it all together. And there were others that were cheap and you'd have to figure out how to put it together on your own. And so me, being the tightwad that I am, decided to go with the cheapest option available. So I looked online, I found this really cool one, it had all these great things to it, but it was really cheap and they said they would have it to us in no time before his birthday party. And I was like, great, that'd give us just enough time to put this thing together for his birthday. So I order it and I talk to my dad and 
like, hey, Dad, it's going to be in a few days. going to need your help putting this thing together. And it shows up, and there's three big boxes that show up at my house. And they didn't look too bad. I was like, okay, it's a big play set. Maybe some of the stuff's already put together for us. This is great. So my dad comes over, and we start unboxing the play set. And we realize that these three boxes contain over thousands of pieces. I do not know who boxed this thing up, but they are a genius or they played too much Jenga when they were a kid, right? Because I don't know how all this stuff fit in these boxes, but we just kept unboxing and boxing and things and we spread all the parts out and I immediately was overwhelmed with anxiety. There is no way with my skill set I'm going to be able to put this thing together, right? I was like, I knew I should have bought the one where they come and they stall it and all that stuff. But my dad was like, all right, um, you think we should do this? And I'm like, dad, you're going to help me? He's like, you got four hours and that's it. And I'm like, oh Lord, four hours. So we spent about the first hour staring at all the parts. <laughs> and after we got over that part, my dad helps me unbox everything. And we start to slowly put each piece together and hours and hours go by. And we thought, you know, we got this. We're going to finish it up. And four hours go by and guess what? It's still unfinished. And guess what? Weeks later, it's still unfinished. It's still sitting in the garage and all we were able to build was a stair ladder, a platform, and a stair ladder. So happy birthday, son. We built you a bridge, you know? <laughs> Hope you enjoy that. But it was just that moment where it just, I felt like I was the last person in the world that should be building this thing. It's not in my skill set. I'm not good at reading instructions or following instructions or building things with instructions. So I didn't know how this was going to happen. And I immediately felt unqualified for the job. Now, I don't know about you, but you probably have similar situations in life. Maybe it's not with a goofy play set, but maybe it's something real in your life that you go through. Maybe it's an opportunity or something going on where you're just like, I don't know how somebody like me could do something like that. And if, you're, if that statement rings true to you, then you're in good company today. Because I think all of us at some point in life have that feeling. But the cool thing is that God wants to use people like you and I to do things that we could never do by ourselves that we can never do on our own. So the word we're gonna look at this morning, the unfinished word, is that God empowers us. That God empowers us. He gives us these things in our lives and he enables us to do things that we can never do on our own. And so today, I want us to talk about how God could empower somebody like me and empower somebody like you to do things that we never thought we could do. And this has kind of been our theme verse for this series. It's found in Philippians. Here's what it says. It says, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it into completion until the day of Christ Jesus. So isn't that good to know that God is working in our lives, that we can be confident in that, and he's going to continue to complete it until the day he returns or the day that we go to heaven, that there's always work that God wants to do in our lives. And the cool thing is that we're not the first people that have had this experience. Go all the way back to the times of the New Testament. Jesus picks some crazy random dudes, knuckleheads like you and I, in order to do ministry with. And he spends three years investing in these young men, pouring into them. They got to see him do life and ministry and all these sort of things. And at the end of his time where he's about to, to leave earth, he gives these guys a set of instructions. And I imagine if I were one of these guys, I would feel very underqualified and very overwhelmed by hearing what Jesus had to say. But I think his instructions to these men and his instructions to us teach us something about how God could work in our lives and through our lives in ways that we could never imagine. So if you have a Bible, we're gonna look at a New Testament book of Matthew. And we're gonna look at Matthew 28 verses 16 through 20. And I want you to look at these instructions that Jesus gives these men. And I want us to look at how he empowered them, but how he could empower us as well. Let's take a look at this. It says, Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go. Everybody say, Go. Make sure you're with me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I commanded you. And surely 
I am with you always to the very end of the age. Some big instructions there, right, for these guys. So Jesus is about to leave, and what he's telling them is, everything I taught you over the last few years, it's now up to you to continue to do what I've taught taught you and trained you to do. Like we talked about last week, Jesus equipped these young men for ministry, and now he tells them to go, take what I've given you, and impact the world around you with it. And these men took what Jesus gave them, and a worldwide movement of the gospel spread around the world because of these men. And you and I sit here today in church because of the impact that these men had on the world. Now you got to think about, these were just normal guys like you and I. There was nothing special about them. God chose to use them to do something very significant in the world. And today, God wants to use your life to count just like he used their life to count. And so if you got one of these when you came in, hopefully you did, you got one of these programs that looks like this, go ahead and pull that out. And together today, what I want us to do is I want us to talk about three ways that God empowers us to impact the world around us. Three ways that God uses us and empowers us And as we look at these three things, I want you to look at what maybe you identify with the most and how God could use your life and your story just like he used these men's lives. So the first thing I want us to look at, number one, is that the first thing that God uses to empower us, he empowers us with purpose. God empowers us with purpose. God wants to give our lives bigger and better purpose than we've ever had before. Think about these men. Most of them were just normal people. They had regular occupations. They were fishermen. They were tax collectors. There was nothing extraordinary about them. But the cool thing is God took some ordinary people and did some extraordinary things through them because he gave them a divine purpose. They weren't just fishing on a dock anymore for fish. They were using their lives to influence and help people. And that's what God enabled these guys to do. And it's the same thing for us. I know a lot of us maybe wake up each day and we're like, man, why am I here? What could God use me to do? And the truth is that God has already given you some incredible gifts, talents, abilities, things he wants you to use for him. But a lot of us just kind of stay stagnant and keep those gifts and things to ourselves. But today I, I would beg the question is, How about we take some of those God-given things, whether we think they're big or small, and we allow God to empower us to use those things to make an impact on people around us. How could God use the things that you're good at and you're good at to make a difference in the world around us? A lot of times we think that God could never use somebody like us, that I'm not good enough, I'm not pretty enough, I'm not this or I'm not that, but the truth is God wired you for a reason. God made us all unique and different so that we would bring different gifts to the table because we all have a part to play in bringing this gospel message forward to the world in which we live. It's really cool when we actually get to see people do this. We get to see people take their gifts and talents and use it to influence people. This past week on Facebook, I saw a really cool post um, from our student ministry here at the Mechanicsville campus. Uh, They got to have a band for their first week, the middle school and high schoolers, in their space. And they got to do some worship songs and all kinds of cool stuff and sing together. And it was really cool. This guy named Jason, he's been trying to learn and play drums and get better and better so that he could eventually play in front of people. And this week, he got the opportunity to do that with our student band. Take a look at this picture. You see kids worshiping, raising, and there's Jason in the back playing drums and helping these students understand what it means to worship and praise God. He's using his gifts and talents to make an impact on these students' lives. And it's really cool to see somebody like him take what God has given him and use it and not keep it to himself. And I just thought that was so cool watching him do that because I know that that he's excited about what God is doing in his life. But that's just one gift. What gifts do you have that you could offer people around you or the world around you to make a difference? Go back to the song that we sung in the very beginning of our service. Let's look at the lyrics to that. It says, we know we were made for so much more than ordinary lives. It's time for us to more than just survive. We were made to thrive. I love those words. 
Because so many of us just get in survival mode every day and we just kind of go through the routine of life not realizing that that's not how we were created to live. We were created to flourish and grow and use the things God has given us for his purpose and plan. We were made to thrive. But yet, that's not a word probably many of us use for our lives right now, do we? And I would suggest today that all of us have this divine purpose in our lives. But there's so many of us that aren't using it. God wants to empower us to use the things he's given us for his glory. But we have to be willing to step out and allow him to use those things that he has given us purpose for. It's just like in this verse, Philippians 2.13, it tells us this. It says, for God is working in you. Everybody say in you. Make sure you're with me. Giving you the desire and the power. Everybody say power. To do what pleases him. So it's not just you going and using these things. It's God working through you. He gave you the desires that you have for a reason. The things that you're good at. The, you know, the skills and the abilities that you have. And then he adds his power to it to do what pleases him, not what pleases us. A lot of times we use our purpose to please ourselves and that's not what we were created to do. The goal is that God working in our lives ultimately would help us work through our lives, the desire and the power that he has. And so today, how could you allow God to empower you to give you the things that you need to do what he's called you to do? and not waste the incredible talents that we all have, but to use them for the betterment of God and people around us. So here's some questions I want you to think about when it comes to purpose. Are you allowing God to work through your life today? Are you allowing God to work through your life? Do you use your gifts, talents, and abilities for God or just to serve yourself? We need to realize that the power God has given us we have to put it into practice. We have to be willing to have on-the-job training like we talked about last week of taking the way that God equips us and using it to allow him to empower us. So today, are you allowing God to empower you with your purpose or is there something that needs to change? Let's look at the second thing that God empowers us to do. Number two, this one may seem a little different. Number two, God empowers us with authority. God empowers us with authority. And so many of us maybe have good or bad examples of authority in our lives. But the cool thing is, is when we look at this verse that we just read in the beginning, here's what it says that God gave to Jesus, who then gave to his disciples. Let's look at this. It says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me, therefore go. So these men weren't going out on their own authority. They were going out with the power and authority that God had given them. And so they weren't just acting on their own strength. They were acting on the authority that God gave them to make a difference around them. And so it's so cool to see that take place in our lives. And many of us probably didn't even realize that God gave us some sort of authority to make a difference while we're here on this earth. I think about this. How many love TV shows? Anybody watch Blue Bloods? Anybody? Blue Bloods? Oh my gosh. This is my show right now. I have crushed so many seasons of this. Um, But it's so good because there's just so many great lessons to learn from Blue Bloods. Um, One in particular, I love when the the new officers kind of come in and they start to get the training and all this stuff. It's like this law enforcement kind of show kind of thing going on. And they take this uh, normal person and they go through all the training, the equipping, everything that they need to get the skills they need. And it's a lot to get to that place to even, you know, go through some of those, you know, tests in preparations to become a law enforcement officer. But you see these, these people go through this training and go through all this stuff, and then finally they get to their graduation, and then they get to become police officers, and they get their badge. And then, at that moment, they get the authority to make those kind of calls to people around them and to act as a law officer. Now, in training, they were going through things and all that, but then when they became a police officer, they had a different kind of authority to make a difference in the world around them. And I think about our lives, it's pretty similar. When we become a follower of Christ, when we cross over that line, God gives us a different kind of authority to be used to influence people around us, to make a difference, to help others, 
to love on people that we could never love on by ourselves, to give us strength and power in areas that we never thought we could overcome. And too many people have things in their lives that are overpowering them, and they don't realize that they have authority and power over those things in their life. And today, no matter what you're facing, no matter what you're going against, no matter how hard your life may be, God has given you authority and power over those things so that you can be the person he's created you to be. But a lot of us, we just kind of sit idle and we don't allow God to work through our lives like he intends to. But today, how could you use the authority God has given you as a believer to really be the person you were created to be? Part of our unfinished work sometimes is realizing things that we didn't even know we had in our toolbox. And today, you have authority from your heavenly Father over the things that you think are conquering you. You have power to conquer over. Which leads us to our last thought together today. The last thing that I believe God gives us when he empowers us to be the people he's called us to be. Number three, he empowers us with courage. Number three, he empowers us with unbelievable courage. I think about these earlier followers of Christ, these young guys, and how many insecurities, doubts, struggles that they had. And then when Jesus basically tells them, hey, guess what? Take what I've given you and go. How difficult that had to be. What had to be going through in their minds to figure out, how could God use somebody like me with all my mistakes, all my doubts, all my insecurities, things that I know I'm not good at? But God gives them this unbelievable courage to change the world. And I believe he wants to give you and I the same courage today. No matter what opportunity we may be facing, no matter what struggle we have in our way, that God wants to give us the courage to face it head on so that we can on the other side see the opportunity that God had for us all along. Because you never know what's on the other side of you choosing to be courageous and God use you. And for a lot of us, we think like, where does this courage come from? Because maybe you don't define yourself as a very courageous person and neither do I, and neither did these first followers. But I think here's where they found their courage. Let's go back to our passage that we read. Here's the courage I think that they found. He said, baptizing in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So where did they get this courage from? They got this courage from knowing that they were never alone. Think about that. Most of us, when we struggle in life, the most of the time we, we feel alone and we feel like we're battling this all by ourselves. But these men had God on their side no matter what circumstance they faced. And the same is true for you and I, that God is always with us no matter what we may go through. And for me, that gives me incredible courage and confidence in knowing that I'm not in this fight by myself, that God has my back no matter what. And that kind of confidence gives me courage to face whatever comes my way. And I hope it does you too, because that's a great promise to know that God will never leave you nor forsake you, that he's with you no matter what you may face today. That's incredible confidence that we have in our creator. And it should give us incredible courage to face whatever comes our way. I think about some people, because I know a lot of people are like, well, it's good for you to talk about that, but, but what about me? What about my life? How could God use someone like me? What well, makes me think of my uh, friend Danny, he's at our Scottsdale campus. Him and his wife, Dixie, have uh, been in our church for a long time. And it's cool to see God working on their life and using them to do all kinds of stuff. But Danny, he's a truck driver for a logging company for a living. And every week, he um, intentionally goes after people to have conversations about faith. He's always inviting people to our church to the point, I think they just kind of come to church with him, so he'll stop asking. And uh, he's just one of those guys. He just, he wants people to know about the relationship with God that he has. So he just keeps inviting them and inviting them. Well, one uh, week last year, he invited um, some friends of his. They've been trying to get them to come. And finally, the friend gave in and said, listen, I'll, I'll bring my family. We'll come to your church. We'll check it out. So they show up that Sunday, and Danny comes up to me. He's like, hey, man, my friends are here. I, I want to introduce you to them. So I got to meet them, and it was so cool to see them there. And they attended church, and afterwards, they're like, man, 
that was awesome. We'll be back next week. So they kept coming and they kept coming. And a few weeks later, um, our lead pastor, Jeff, was speaking. And he gave an invitation at the end for people to accept Christ into their life for the first time. And I could see Danny and I could see me. And we were both looking over at his friends he'd been inviting. And we look across the row and his entire family raised their hand to accept Christ into their life for the first time. How awesome is that? And Danny, I tell you, he's just a normal dude. Like he's just allowing God to use him to do some extraordinary things that he never knew was possible. And so he, you know, helps them get into this relationship with God. And a few weeks later, let me show you this picture. We got to baptize their family last summer all together. And even though it's me upstanding with this family, baptizing them, this would have never happened if it weren't for Danny using his faith to count and being courageous and allowing God to work in and through his life like never before. And that's the kind of courage I want to have because I know there's people just like them and there's people just like you and I that need to know about the love of Christ in our lives. But it's going to take some of us stepping up to the plate instead of just watching everybody else on the sideline. It's time to step up and get into the game and allow God to use you and empower you in ways that you never thought were possible. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to have it all together. You don't have to work at a church. All you have to do is be obedient. Simply say, God, use somebody like me to count. God, use somebody like me to make a difference for you. God, empower somebody like me. Allow me to be willing before you and be obedient. That's it. That's the secret ingredient. And if all of us can leave here today saying, God, I want to be obedient to you no matter what, there's no telling the difference that we can make in the world around us. But for some of us, we get so cozy and comfortable in our lives that we don't allow God to work through us anymore. And it's so sad to see people with so much potential, so many gifts, talents, and abilities just continue to stay stagnant in the life that they had instead of saying, God, I want you to use me. God, I want you to empower me with purpose. God, empower me with your authority and empower me with courage to make a difference for you. Today, what opportunity is before you? Maybe it's at home. Maybe it's serving at church somewhere that you never stepped up and served. Maybe it's an opportunity at work to have that conversation with that person that you know God's been asking you to talk to. Maybe it's inviting that family across the neighborhood from you to church. Maybe it's just spending some time with that one person that you know needs a listening voice. Today, how could God empower somebody like you, somebody ordinary, to do something extraordinary? Because I believe God has opportunities for every single one of us when we leave here today. But it's up to you and I if we want to take them or not. And so as we close out our time together today, I got to thinking about this message and I was working on it this week and I was putting my son to bed and uh, one cool thing my wife and I did for our kids is in, our, in their bedrooms above their cribs, we um, bought these prayers for them that has their name and has a prayer that we would like to speak over their life just as a, a kind of an encouragement to them as they struggle or go through things that they can read it and know exactly what mom and dad have you know, in store for them or pray for them every single day. And I was uh, putting my oldest son to bed the other night and I'm reading what we wrote for him as I'm putting him to bed. And I was like, wow, that's a really powerful prayer for my son. But it's not really just a powerful prayer for my son. It's a powerful prayer for me as his dad. And then I got to thinking about you and I, and it's also a powerful prayer for all of us that take this Christian life seriously and want to do something about it. Not just know about God, but really want to follow God and do what he's called us to do. And so today, I want to read that prayer to you. And I want you to take these words that I read and I want them to speak over your life and be your prayers we leave here today. And not only will you read them here, they're also on your programs if you want to take them home and think about it. But here's the prayer I want us to read together. And this is for my son, but it's also for you all. It says this. It says, you were born to blaze new trails, pioneer great adventures, reclaim new territory. Take daring risk. 
You were born to tell an original story. Be God strong and foolishly courageous. Let faith not fear be your compass. Truth not lies be your guide. Always remember to give God room to prove himself faithful. You were born for such a time as this. And as I pray that over my son, I also pray that over myself. And as I pray it over myself, I also pray it for you all. That every single one of us would be willing to pioneer some great adventures. Take some new territory for God. Take some risk. Allow God to move more. So that we can truly be the people that God created and called us to be from the very beginning. My prayer is that you be more on purpose for a purpose for God that you take the authority that God has given you and you do something about it and that you take this unbelievable courage and you step out in faith and allow God to use your life like you've never seen him use it before. And so today as we close at all of our campuses, I'm just going to ask that you go ahead and stand up where you're at. And uh, you can go ahead and close your eyes and bow your head. I want to do something different as we close out today. I know there's many of you that um, will go out of here and just leave, and and that's totally fine. But I know there's some of you today that God has been putting an opportunity in front of you, that God has been wanting to use your life, and you know it, that God has a purpose and a plan for you that you've been wanting to act on, but you've just kind of been sitting on the sidelines, and you're like, today I want to use that, that gift, that talent, that ability for God. I want to step up, and I want to step out. I know that there's some opportunity that God wants to use me for. And today you say, you know what? I I really want to act on that. And if that's you, if you're asking today, I just want God to empower me for that. I just want you to raise your hand while you're at so I can pray for you today at all of our campuses. Cool. Wow. That's awesome. Awesome. Well, today as we close, Let's ask for God to empower us, whatever opportunities lie before us as we leave here today. Let's pray. Jesus, I thank you so much for our time together today. God, I thank you for the example of these early disciples that we get to learn from to see how ordinary people, God, can do extraordinary things. So God, I ask today that you help us step out of the safety net of comfort and into the plan and purpose that you have for us, God. May we choose to get uncomfortable. May we choose, God, to get wild after you so that, God, we can see you do some extraordinary things in our lives as well. Lord, I pray for each and every person that raised their hand today. And I pray that you uh, would empower them for the opportunities and purpose that lie before them. God, we know it's not gonna be easy. We know it's not gonna be uh, just one of those things where we can do it by ourselves. So we need your help. So we pray for guidance and protection. And God, ultimately that you would be in everything that we're doing. We love you. We praise you. And God, I ask that you would make a difference to each and every person here today as they go out into their lives and make a difference for you. In your name we pray. Amen. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. Can we have got a hand for our time together today? Awesome. Well, thank you all for being here. Thank you for listening to me. If you think I'm weird, come back next week. Our lead pastor will be back. And um, he'll continue our unfinished series. Have a blessed Sunday. We hope this message will help you continue to explore, experience, and express God's grace and truth for your life. If Atlee Church is making a difference in your life, we'd love to hear from you. If you have any questions from this message, we'd love to talk to you. Email us at stories at atleechurch.org. Check out our website for more about our community, our ministries, and how you can financially support Atlee Church to help us continue to share messages like this one. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe. We have links on our website where you can search for us on iTunes to get this podcast every week. Thanks again and hope to see you next Sunday.